Hi everyone, my name is Blake Sani, and I will be walking you through Lab 1 of Physics 2212, titled Charged Tapes. The purpose of this lab is to determine the excess electric charge on common household objects, like clear tape in this instance. We will explore the physical property of charge through Coulomb's Law, which relates electric fields and forces with point charges at a distance. We will also further our understanding of charge by visualizing how charge affects object behavior. Looking ahead to the experiment's results, the tape had a charge of negative 1.2 times 10 to the negative 8 coulombs. This charge is negative as the tape contained an excess of electrons. To replicate this experiment, create a U-tape by quickly pulling a tape strip off of a base tape, shown in figure 1. Ensure the tape is negatively charged by rubbing a plastic pen and observing repulsion with the tape. Repulsion is necessary because attraction can still occur between a charged and neutral object. Repeat steps 1 and 2, creating two total U-tapes. Then, lift one tape under the other until the top tape floats, shown in figure 2. Finally, record the distance between the tapes for later analysis. The central physical model used in this lab is visualized to the right in the form of a free body diagram. The two tapes repel because they are both negatively charged. Notice that the repulsion forces are of equal magnitude but opposite direction. The top tape, referred to as B, floats when it has no net Y force. This means that the electric force due to bottom tape A fully counteracts gravity. Before we proceed, we need to make several assumptions. We must treat the tapes as point charges, where both tapes hold the same charge. We will also use the tape's length to approximate their mass and number of exterior atoms. These atoms, let's assume, are configured in a perfect lattice. Lastly, since air resistance is negligible, we will ignore its presence in our calculations. The values physically measured during the experiment are the tape's length, width, and the distance between them. Collected values are seen on the slide. Using this data, we can further derive values we need for our calculations, such as tape weight or the force of gravity, the tape's surface area, and the total number of atoms on the tape's surface. Since we know that the electric force on the tape equals the negative force of gravity, we can solve for the electric force on B, 0 newtons horizontally and 2.3 times 10 to the negative 3 newtons vertically. Using Coulomb's law, we can approximate tape A's charge given the resulting force at a known distance. Isolating charge in Coulomb's law, we find that the charge of each tape is negative 1.2 times 10 to the negative 8 coulombs. As previously stated, this is due to an excess of electrons. Since we know the charge of an electron to be negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs, we can determine the total number of excess electrons to be 7.5 times 10 to the 10. Still, this is a small amount, since the ratio of excess electrons to total atoms is 1 to 6.9 times 10 to the 6. We can use computers to model our experiment. In this lab, the GlowScript IDE and VPython are used to make calculations and output results and render a virtual 3D simulation that reinforces our physical model from earlier. First, let's define our constants at the top of the VPython workspace. This is an important step, since if these values are changed later, the following computations will adapt. My data is entered below, with the appropriate unit commented for clarity. Now, let's use VPython to perform the calculations shown on previous slides. The mathematical expressions will reference our constants from earlier for consistency and flexibility. Note that the print statement outputs text to the console, displayed in the lower right corner. This acts as a summary of the computation's results and their practical meaning. Finally, let's leverage GlowScript's 3D modeling capabilities to render a simulation of our physical model from earlier. Here, the green vectors on the points represent the electric force due to the other point, and the red vector represents the force of gravity. We can reduce the amount of code written during this process by defining vector computation and rendering under a function, so it can be performed multiple times. Now, to answer the lab's reflection questions, let's consider, if the electrons and protons had inverse charges, how would our observations change? The answer is that both tapes would still have the same absolute charge, just with a different sign. The tapes would still repel, regardless of the charge shared by the tapes, as visualized to the right. Secondly, why is it important to handle charged tapes as little as possible? Charged tapes like mine hold excess electrons, so interacting with other objects may cause the tapes to lose electrons because such electrons will naturally transfer to the more neutral object. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you for lab 2!